Welcome and welcome back. My name is Moran and this is my channel where I share my crochet object, knitting journey and other creative adventures. Today is Tuesday, April 2nd and this is episode 11. Today I have a sourdough update and I have three blankets projects to share with you. One is a finished object that I just want to update you with something. Uh, which you might find helpful and I have an upcoming getaway trip to update you with so let's first start with what I'm wearing I am wearing the small size of the sunny scarf uh, it's a pattern available on both my Etsy and Ravelry stores the, this is the small size that I wear today and I only I wear it with one knot in, in front. I didn't wrap it around. I shared all the details about this pattern on previous episode. If you are new here, I will link the episode down below in the description box for you, uh, right under uh, this video. Uh, and I will also link the pattern. The short, the, the small size, which is what I'm wearing today, is uh, I made it using one ball of Premium Cashmere by Lang. Yes, so this is about what I'm wearing. Um, let's move on to a sourdough update. So right before I was uh, coming here to sit and chat with you about some knitting and crochet, I scheduled a new video that will go live later today on my YouTube channel, uh, in which I share from the start right from the first step up to the uh, last one i shared my sourdough baking recipe and sourdough baking process so i've been asked for it for quite a while and many of you reached out and asked if i can share my sourdough bread recipe and process as well as the weekly knitters here so on monday monday girls really pushed me and asked if i can you know make a workshop a special workshop for them and then the knit night girls asked um, last week on the knit night uh, two of the girls said let's please give us the recipe please show us how you do it and so eventually now there is a video full video of how i make my sourdough from start to finish i'm not a professional not in movie making so it's not the most professional sourdough making uh, video that you will find here on youtube there are plenty of excellent ones and i'm not a professional like sourdough baker but i share my experience and i share my knowledge for i started my sourdough journey at the beginning of 2020 right before covid you know came into our life and um yeah so i have an experience with this process and some knowledge and i thought uh that yeah, it will be nice to have a video here on, over on my YouTube channel. So it will be, it's available when you see this episode. Um, yeah, I, I just placed a camera and recorded the entire process for you. I, for the last year, I bake two like fat baguette out of the dough because it fits my pot i have a special like sourdough pot and it's an oval one and it, the two baguettes fits perfectly inside but i thought it will be much more helpful if i will create a rounded loaf so i created a, after a long time that i didn't uh, make rounded loaf i for the sake of this video i created a rounded loaf so you can use the and any you know rounded pot you have so yeah this will be available for you i created a silent video but i added both english and hebrew captions so i also wanted my local followers and local knitters here on our weekly clubs i wanted it to be also helpful helpful for them so it's a silent but you have hebrew and english captions i hope you will find it helpful and if i helped any of you um, so it makes me happy so this is now available on my uh, here on my youtube channel yeah so finished object number one 
Let's move on to some knitting and crochet. So the first finished object, the first thing I wanted to share is regarding this blanket, this finished object. I finished knit crocheting it last June. Um, and this is made up out of a basic granny square, I think seven rounds or something like that. I shared many tutorials here on YouTube, on my YouTube channel on how to crochet the square and how to join it and how to frame it. And then I had a special episode when I shared everything about it. But I made it mainly to be used as a winter kind of blanket in our living room. And eventually it found a place on, and it lives mostly on our bedroom as a bedspread. But a few weeks after I started you know, place, you know, laying it on our bed, I found that a, a little part of the joining got broke. So I had, you know, a little bit of yarn left in my studio and I took the yarn and, you know, immediately sew it back because I used the sewing joining method. And the entire blanket is made out of knit, the heavy merino by knitting for olive. I had some left and I fixed it. And I know that a few of you started to make the exact same blanket using the exact same yarn. So I wanted to let you know that this happened again a few weeks ago. So a few weeks ago, I, I spread the blanket on our bed and then I realized there is another spot that got broke in the joining part. So I thought to come here and share it with you and let you know, I, of course, I fixed it. I shared some footage. I will share some footage with you of me sewing it back and joining, joining it back. I really, really love the way the sewing join looks. I will show it to you from up close in a minute, but I thought it will be helpful for those of you who are now busy making the same blanket uh, that if I would do it again I wouldn't use the sewing um, joining method for this blanket with this specific yarn because I think it's not strong enough to hold this uh, size of blanket and you know when you spread the blanket on the bed it might I don't know weakness weaken the yarn sorry for the helicopter noise I hope there are no bad news in the evening because helicopters here are coming with uh, soldiers from, yeah. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to update you that I, if I would do it again, I would consider to use the front slip stitch joining method or the single crochet joining method, uh, which you, you know, place the squares uh, facing each other and single crochet into the back loops of each of the squares. This is what I would do uh, if I would do it again. So you might consider it as well. Anyway, it's now fixed and I really, really like the way it looks. But yeah, I know that it might uh, happen again. So this is how the sewing joining mm, looks on the blanket. So yeah, this is it regarding uh, the update on my uh, basic granny square blanket. Yeah, so now it's fixed. And I also have a, another, you know, I have more yarn in case it will happen again in the future. All the details about this making will be, uh, are shared on another different episode that I made in the past. I will link it down below for you. Next, I wanted to, next, what is next? Yeah, next is another crochet project. And this one lives in my Nina bag. The Nina bag pattern is available also on Etsy and Ravelry. Uh, I will try to remember to link this one as well for you. And yeah, and here lives another granny square blanket project. It's more like a throw. Uh, and this is the soft rose throw that is made out of soft rose square. I have a full tutorial of how I crochet these squares here on my YouTube channel. 
And this week, earlier this week, I spread all the squares because I crocheted quite a lot of squares and I spread all the squares that I have uh, ready and now I have 12 by 9 rows completed. I think I will add one more row and complete this blanket. Now I have left three balls. I used the knitting for olive uh, merino, which is a fingering wool. Let me show it to you. Yeah, this is the knitting for olive merino, and I have left three balls of this wool. And I shared uh, how I make, and I shared a lot of details in the past here, so I don't want to repeat myself, but each of the balls makes uh, eight soft rows squares. Eight soft rows squares. I use a three millimeter crochet hook. So I will go ahead and crochet, I think, nine more squares to, or 12 more squares to, you know, make a 12 by 10 throw. Uh, so I will use one full ball and a little bit of the next one, maybe half of the next one, and then I will have left one and a half balls for the framing. I don't have any special like uh, plants for the border. I want to keep it simple. I want to, you know, keep the minimalistic uh, monochrome um, kind of style for this throw. And so yeah, the, here this is where I am, and I will in a minute let uh, give you some details about our upcoming getaway trip. Uh, but I plan to take one ball with me to our next trip and you know maybe or maybe two balls and to crochet more squares so when i come back i might be ready for the joining and this time i plan to join i plan to join um to use the slip stitch front slip stitch joining method which is um a tutorial shared here on my youtube channel so yeah these are two crochet projects and I think we can move on to a knitting blanket. So I have an update on my coziest memory blanket. It's been a while that I shared the progress. I made quite a progress here and I wanted to share it with you. This project lives in this fringe supply bag. I have this bag for years and yeah, I have to say it's a very uh, it was a very clever idea to move this project to this bag because uh, every time I you know I work on it I can take the blanket out and start working and then I have everything all the yarns uh, very like you know reachable or or it's very comfortable to keep everything here. I also have the needles I use. I always have this for the nails in case I have something, you know. Uh, I have uh, scissors and I have my um, darning needles and also a weight that I can weight the yarn before using them. So every time I plan to add a square, I can choose very easily from this bag. And yeah, I made the progress. I'm making my way on row 11 on my, on my coziest memory blanket. So let me show you how it looks now. So my blanket is 26 squares and I want to make it 26 by 20. And this is row 11 made. Let's look from the start. This is a leftover sock, hand dyed sock wool that I got from one of the Monday girls and this one as well. It's, I think this one is, yeah, it's a fingering sock wool. This one is a mixture between uh, of two yarns. Like this one is a fingering sock wool that I had, you know, a tiny bit of left from. 
And then I uh, completed the square using Arueta uh, by Phil Colana, also a sock wool, four ply fingering sock wool. So I do these combination quite a lot in my in my blanket. You can see here, you can see here, here I striped two colors. So this is row 11, again this is another combination of two different yarns. I just like the way it gives this, the blanket a little depth and also it gives it like a personal handwriting, I think. And I really care about the color, so I'm not working like uh, mindless, like I'm choosing my colors. I think I shared a lot more about it in the past year. Anyways, I'm just about to finish. Not just about to finish, but I have, I think, six more squares to go to finish row 11. And, and I already know, I already chose the next uh, square that I will add. I will, uh, let me show it to you. I'm going to, the next where I will add, you know what, let me show it to you here. The next square I will add will be this light blue. This is what I plan to add next. And this was part of a, like a mini set from the wool barn. This mini set. that one of the weekly uh, makers here uh, gave me to, you know, start using. We are a few more and more of the weekly makers here in my Monday's Club and Knit Night Clubs. We make more and more knitters are joining this, you know, joyful making. And we swap a lot and we order minis uh, together. So it's a lovely, like, you know, sense of community, like a community making. I really, really enjoy this aspect of this work. Um, and yeah, it's a long process and we, all of it, in it together, we enjoy it, we, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not a project when you can, you know, completely control the color layout. You can if you choose to work with a few yarns, but if you choose to work with different and yarns and to use, you know, leftovers and to maybe, you know, swap and, uh, how shall I say, if you share yarns together with other makers, it makes the whole entire project, give it, you know, another, like, I don't know how to say, but it's like, it's like another aspect of making and it's another um, adventure, another kind of making adventure. So this is where I am with my coziest memory blanket. I am completely in love with it and I am, I still really, really enjoy working on it, enjoy the process. Yeah, and every time I fold it, I'm completely blown away from, you know, the color composition, the layout, and it's really, really exciting. So this is where I am with this project. And yeah, last thing, uh, I wanted to update you that Eyal and myself are going, maybe when this episode is up on my YouTube channel, we are on our way, or maybe we are already in Holland. We we'll travel to Holland tomorrow, just the two of us, for a little getaway, getaway vacation, I think you can call it. We thought about it a lot, but eventually we decided to go on a vacation. Um, it wasn't an easy decision for us because of the situation here in Israel. Uh, it was very hard to choose to leave it is very hard and very heavy on their heart uh, to choose to live while, you know, 
in these days why the situation is so heavy and so complicated and why we still have hostages kept uh, in tunnels in the dark by terrorists. Uh, it's really hard for me to talk about it, even just to sit in front of the camera and to talk about it. It's very hard for me. And it was a very hard decision to leave, uh, also to leave the families. The, there is so much pain here, so much pain. And at the same time, there is, uh, it's, everything is very, very uh, intense here. Life is very intense. And we have a very good friend in Holland and she was pushing her, us very hard uh, to come and visit her. She visited us. Uh, during the the years that we, we we are we know each other before we got married and before she was originally she was an old friend of Eyal when before we met and uh, we know her for years and she and her family visited us uh, for quite a few times they, they love Israel they have a lot of friends in Israel and they live in a very small village in the center, more towards the south of Holland. And they have an Airbnb and they said they were kindly, kind enough to invite us to get some, you know, to chill out, to get some rest. And uh, we finally decided to do it. So tomorrow we will be on our way to Holland and we will spend about, about a week we will be most of the time will be with Masha. Her kids are, you know, already grown up. They don't live with them. And her husband, uh, sometimes he works far away from home. So in the days that we will be there, it we will be only spending time with her until Andy, her husband, will come uh, and join us. Will come back from the work he does in outside of Poland, I think. Uh, and yet they were so kind to offer us to, offer us, uh, to come and stay with them and to chill out. And we don't have any, you know, uh, extra special plans. We just plan to chill out, relax, lay back, have some, you know, local hiking, knitting time, crochet time, um, biking trips. She already uh, get us, uh, she already sent us an application that we uh, have in our phones that we can, um, that this application offers you, um, you know, local biking trips and hiking routes. And that's what we plan. Uh, we will take a car when we, you know, we will, arrive to Sripol airport, we'll take a car and drive to her. So I guess we will go, uh, you know, visit places. She lives like an hour from Utrecht and from other very lovely cities. So I guess we will go and visit our places, but we mainly want to chill out and yeah, use the sauna. They have a small sauna in the garden. They have a vegetable garden. So for me, she already uh, told me that uh, she she waits for me to see her vegetables and to use the sauna, and I'm very, very excited about that. Uh, but yeah, I also hope I will make it to visit some yarn shops. So if by any chance there is a viewer here from Holland, please, and if you have any special recommendations or yarn, yarn shops that you recommend, um, please, leave it in the comment section um, if you have any recommendations for me. On the last two days of the visit, we will visit Amsterdam. Um, I, I don't know yet, but we might visit also friends over there. Uh, and yes, yeah, so we will be spending two days also in Amsterdam. I don't know if you remember last episode I showed you these two coasters that uh, I told you I crocheted them as I was sharing the pattern on my blog. And, and I made these for Masha to give uh, as a gift for her. Uh, and yeah, so I hope they will, you know, be useful for her and I hope she will like them. Yeah, so this is about the trip. What I take with me to knit or crochet, I'm not sure yet. Usually I take 
um, like a soft project to knit because it's very easy to carry, it's very small. I will for sure take this lovely bag that Yael made for me, the, one of the makers in the Knit Night Club. I will take uh, this bag for sure with maybe two balls of the knitting for Olive Merino and we'll crochet a few more squares. I have a little project that I work on, which is also a crochet project that I might take with me. And maybe as usual, I will take a pair of socks, but I think, I'm not sure. I have to say I have not uh, fully packed, you know, yet. I just started to pack. I was very busy this morning with laundry and food preparing for the boys because they will stay here and I have to make sure they have something good to eat uh, or on other cases they will eat whatever they will eat and it might be also some junk. Uh, but yeah, and this evening I will have the knit night club here so I don't have a lot of time. I hope I will not have a lot of editing work on this episode but yeah, let's see. Anyways, I think this is it for this episode. As always, thank you so much for joining me here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you soon on the next one. I might share some of our Holland adventure kind of trip on my Instagram stories. This is always my go-to. It's very easy for me to pick up the phone and to share, but I might also choose to, you know, take some steps back uh, from social media I will I think I will I, I don't know I imagine I will take some footage to share he, here with you when we are back yeah so I hope to see you soon on the next one and until then happy making everyone bye <music>